that's why divorce is something I would advocate for people. If you're unhappy and miserable, go for it. Yeah. It doesn't mean the end. It means the end of one way of living and starting a new way of living, which is probably going to be a happier, more fulfilling way of living. I'm Amanda Silver. And I'm Alex Howard. And this is Dirty Laundry. Welcome back. Welcome back. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Gearing up for the holidays. Ryan is laughing at us already. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> holidays are coming what you have plans uh, yeah i'm going to florida Yay. Yes, yes sun seeker a lot of you know us jews head south to florida amazing of course <laughs> do you get like so better deals the migration no we don't oh. get any better deals no it's not like but isn't traveling at like during christmas time cheaper no are you kidding oh i get traveling I, during not. christmas time is the worst time oh. to travel it is the most expensive oh. time to travel but, like if you were to go on christmas day i feel okay, like the flights okay, would be fine. cheap if I were to fly, I have in the past, but it doesn't work out for my schedule. I guess okay. if you were to fly on Christmas Day, but like the, the, they know, they know. People they, are going to look for the, they, family. The kids are out of yeah. school. So like right. it's just the hottest time of year to travel. Yep. And um, it's just, yeah, it is expensive to travel during this time. And like even right, in so January returns are crazy. You're, you're fucked. You're fucked if you want to go south. Sun better be worth it. I think the sun is worth it. Hopefully Listen, I just some... left the sun and it you is worth it. You just came back from Mexico. <laughs> so you are definitely... still, you still have a glow. Yes, highly recommended. You still have a Go that, get that, that sun. Glow. I just, the thing is with Florida is that you don't get guaranteed weather. The thing with Florida is it's Florida. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. I just I like, it's Florida. Uh, well, Miami is, see, to me, Miami is, is, is a separate place. Yeah, Miami fair. is, it's almost like, it's its own country. Yeah. It's, very it's kind of like sense. Austin in Texas. It's like Austin like, it is its, it's own not, place. It's so different, I think, than the rest of Florida. Like Miami yeah. just has its own vibe and culture and, yeah. right, and environment. So I think it's just like it's a very different place. And then my kids go off to California. Okay. And I spend a week or just under a week in South Beach with my sister. Are they is, flying like unaccompanied minors? No. No. Never. Too little. Oh, never. No. Just flat out never. I don't take <laughs> Hold on. I don't take the subway. Right. right. I am a grown woman who does not (laughs) take the subway unless it's very extreme circumstances. Right. So there is no way in hell that my kids are ever going to be flying on their own until they're at least, I don't know, me. It's so funny because Benny's about to be 12 and I'm like, sweet. I'm going to come to I'm going to send him to LA to see my sister. I can send him to Newfoundland to see my other sister. I'm like, no, 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 absolutely not. Oh, I think it's so great. No, no. No, no, no. My build kids. their confidence, their sense of independence. I just build dependency. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so no, no, no. I'm actually, I'm flying with them to Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, to give them to their dad, who's then going to take them on to California. Oh, there you go. So it works out. It's like a midway okay. point. And actually it works out. We did it last year too. It worked out really That's well. That's beautiful. So, so you almost do like a layover in Dallas and then come home to Toronto. And I come home. Yeah, but no, 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 no. I'm in, I'm in Florida. With the kids. Yeah. I take the kids to Dallas. Okay. Their dad comes from California, meets us in Dallas. Okay. He takes the kids on to California and I go back to Florida. Uh-huh. So my oh, kids, for sister time. Yeah. So my kids are in three states <laughs> and three time zones in one day. Oh my goodness. And it's the, it, they look so forward to it. Oh, it's their I best day. Because like, you know when you're a kid yeah. and you travel, it's fun. Yeah. You're on the airplane. It's fun. Yeah, because the air seats actually fit your tush it's an, size. It's an exciting adventure. When you're an adult, yeah. you're like, you have to worry about everything and your lug- luggage and your yeah. lines and your, this, your layovers and all this. It's when you're a kid, it's just an adventure. Yeah. So. It's just like free yeah. pop and iPad time. Exactly. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that sounds yeah. amazing. I'm excited to get away and to have some family time as well. Um, so hopefully it'll be good. Love it. Yeah. I'm Thank so you. happy you're here. Thank Welcome. you. I'm very happy to be here. This will be fun. Yes. Nice to meet so you. we are on with Jody McBurney and who we go back, what, five, six, seven years More than of that. working slash friendship? 2013, girl. 20, 10 years. 10 years. Oh my 10. God, my daughter is going to be 10. <laughs> you met her in the carrier. I did. Yeah. Alex cruised in and uh, was at the time the owner of a venue and I was working for... Um, a chef and Alex told me later, uh, and correct me if I miss if I misrepresent, but Alex said that after we spoke on the phone, she said, I need to meet this girl and be friends with her. So she cruised on over, rolled in with her brand new baby <laughs> running this uh, venue. And she's got like a little, you know, peanut in this thing that you can just swing around because the baby's probably like eight pounds yeah, at totally. that point. <laughs> and she came in and introduced herself and we started working closely together. Yeah. And then over time we fell in love. Yeah. And here we are. Aww. Literally, we had this phone call and I was like, 
she's going to be friends with me <laughs> if it's oh, the last nice. thing I do. I'm really glad you decided that that day yes. because here we are and it Decade was very later. organic. It was mutual. Yeah. 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 You so are we, like a mother hen, you know, Alex. Like you which take is people funny. under your wing. And it's because I'm I one of those people. Yeah. I don't often like Just, people, but when I do. <laughs> I don't often like but people. when I do. You know like, you're special. I really, really go all in. Yeah. Like I'm committed yeah. to a friendship. With your whole heart. Yeah. 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 When we met on Zoom, I was like, we're going to be yeah. friends. Yeah, I felt the like, same Let's way. go for coffee. Let's meet in person. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Zoom. I think um, when I think of how committed you are to our friendship, mm. if others are experiencing that, I, I don't know how you find the time to run a family a and all your accounts yeah, yeah, exactly. and all your wonderful friends. It's no wonder you're struggling to run <laughs> your accounts. social media accounts. Because you are a very... She's a busy girl. She's a very dedicated friend. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's so very I'm sweet. thrilled to be here and Alex speaks so highly of you. And Aww. I have, of course, uh, listened to some of your podcasts. So um, I think what you guys are doing is great. And yeah. um, it's, it's a way to turn something that people perceive as painful mm -hmm. and is painful, but actually ultimately brings people to a happier place. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that you guys have turned a focus on that to bring other people's awareness to this so that people, when they are in that grieving stage, can have some hope yeah. that there is this journey that they go through. And when they get to the other side, it's all worth it, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So well, since you're familiar with the show, then you know that we really get into it. Yeah. So I'm are you the questions. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take what you hit me with and I'm going to, I'm going to embrace it. Good. Yeah. If you don't want to answer something, obviously you don't have to. I okay. will answer yes. everything. <laughs> I promise. So you were married once. Once upon a time. Many moons ago. Yes. Uh, together for a year, engaged for a year, married for four. Quick. Okay. Very like, quick. Quick turnaround. Quick to, quick to marriage. Quick to marriage. Uh, I was 29, 28 when we met, got engaged 29. Oh no, sorry. 29 when we met, engaged at 30 and married at 31. Mm. Um, and like most people who get married, you go in uh, thinking, you know, that if there are any indications of little problems that you'll fix mm -hmm. those yeah. or that maybe you'll grow together or you can maybe adapt. Mm. And I think people, for me, that was my experience. Yeah. Believing that the situation I was going into was something that I could uh, modify mm. uh, and I could not. So were there already, let's say, red flags or issues? I think so. Yeah. I yeah. think there were uh, in hindsight. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say right from the outset that my ex-husband and I are great friends to Today. this day. Oh, so we've been through the journey and I'll get into that obviously. But at the time, when I look back, I think we could both confidently say that it probably wasn't something we ought to have rushed mm -hmm. into so quickly. And do you feel like there was this sort of pressure, like a societal pressure? You yeah. were approaching 30 kids, Everybody husband. was getting engaged. Yeah. Um, he was someone that came along who was kind. He's a very kind person. Um, and I had been in some maybe situations that weren't so comforting. Mm. And I think I decided that I needed this sort of kind teddy right. bear persona, which is a great a great thing uh, if your dynamic together is um, compatible mm. and if you are aligned, which in hindsight, I don't feel that we were, right. you know? So um, I think for us, after we got married <clears throat> and it became clear that we were struggling, you go into the determination mode that yeah. you're going to make it work. Yeah. So you've got these um, instincts that you're ignoring mm -hmm. because you've just made this huge commitment. You've spent all this money. You've had this beautiful wedding with lots of genuine sentiments, mm -hmm. sentiments that you've expressed in front of everybody that aren't not true, but you're sort of like, is this right? Should I be in this situation? Yeah. It, it didn't feel right. It, there was something off, but you go into like, no, you're going to make it work. You're going to make it work. And so it was sort of this, you know, waffling over time. And then um, at some point it became very, uh, like I had this epiphany that I couldn't have children in this relationship. Mm. So 
a, a, a wise girlfriend of mine who is also divorced said to me once, you know, Jody, uh, for some women, it's more important that they have children. Yeah. And for some women, it's more important. It's who they're having children with. And for me, it was more important who I was going to have children with. So I never had children because I never met that person mm. that I felt like I could have children with. Um, and when I'm in the marriage and it's a struggle and there's a lot of disagreements and a lot of just moments that don't feel like what you think should be if you're going to be married. And then you also get the crystallization that this is not the relationship you're going to have children in. You're like, well, why am I in it then yeah. anymore? What am I doing here? And then you start down the path to talking about ending the relationship, which is quite devastating mm -hmm. to even table and devastating maybe in our dynamic, uh, you know, men, I'm going to say a generalized sweeping statement about men are not necessarily as intuitive as mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. So they might be uh, more inclined to go along ignoring for a while and maybe for a longer period of time. Whereas I think women have more of that gut instinct. So I didn't follow any of my gut instincts and I probably should have. And you only know that looking back, oh right? Boy. So then we had to go through the journey of divorce and we actually uh, had a marriage counselor because we were take, going through all, like all the stops, right? Like mm. where, how can we fix this? How right. can we fix this? And um, then uh, when we uh, agreed that we were going to get divorced, we stayed in counseling through the divorce process to help us maintain. That's amazing. That's really. To help us maintain that's really unusual yeah. and also wonderful. Yeah. Because imagine if our clients could stay with their counselors to help them through the right? divorce. I mean, that's often why we end up doing divorce coaching. Because it's right. like we, you need a support system. You need someone to talk to, to confide in, to give advice, to be like a reasonable an emotive sounding board. Usually they stop, they stop therapy, they stop counseling mm -hmm. and then they go get divorced. And they go get divorced. But imagine, can't, but yeah, please. I go, think like, so I, brilliant. I would say to anyone who's going through divorce, stay with your counselor. It ultimately ends and typically by the person who feels slighted. So in right. our case, and men, they're not really sitting about sitting and putting their heart on their sleeve, generally speaking. So at a certain point, my ex-husband was like, I'm done with this, mm -hmm. right? Like, he's like, why are we bothering? Like, if we're not, if it's not going to move forward, I think he was looking at it as a path to possible resolution. Right. Right. And I was looking at it as trying to keep us aligned and keep those lines of communication open. And, you know, my dad always says, you have to keep the lines of communication open when in a tough situation. Mm -hmm. And in any tough situation, whether it's a marriage or a, a working situation or a, a, a mean neighbor that you live next door mm -hmm. to, whatever the situation is, if you cut off the communication, everything comes to a halt. Yeah. So it's at the hardest times when communication is impossible that you actually have to communicate with people. And how do you do that when there's anger and bitterness and resentment and frustration and irritation and all of the things that you experience when you're going through divorce? So we did do that. We did maintain that counseling. I think it was very, very helpful. Uh, and then we went through the period where you're, well, then we went through the denial period where now we'd agreed, but then we sort of stayed together, mm -hmm. you know, like we sold our house, we moved out, we moved into separate places, but I would still stay with him sometimes. Like we had a hard time pulling away from each mm -hmm. other. Uh, I was losing a massive security blanket. I was losing my kind teddy bear, yeah. right? And he wasn't a mean person. He's not a mean person. We just weren't right together. Right. So um, that was the biggest shock to my system was after we separated and we weren't together anymore. I felt naked to the world. Like I felt like, where's my protector? Mm -hmm. Like, where is that person that's always by my side? that I feel safe when I'm out in public. He's like 6'5", he's right. like a big guy, <laughs> like total teddy bear, he's not a fighter or anything, but like, I just was a, like lost without that. And then, so we did that for about three months, that whole dance. And then again, it was him. He's like, enough of this right. BS. Like this, if it's done, it's done. Well, especially if he was hoping for reconciliation or still wanted to be in your life. That's it's like reopening it's the wound. Really it was hard. a complicated. And so at this yeah. point we're separated, right? We're not divorced at this point. I don't even think we'd spoken to a divorce lawyer at this point. Oh, wow. So then we engaged with divorce lawyers and 
uh, a year long stalemate ensued Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. what's fair, what's right, you know, what, who's getting what, whatever. We were only together for four years. There wasn't a lot to split up. We didn't have children, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that process for us was simplified. I recognize for many people it's not, and I can't even imagine how difficult that must be to part lives. Mm. You know, even the sense of shame that I know I felt and I feel he did too about coming apart was Mm. deep, really deep. So embarrassed. I was the first one of my friends for my marriage to fail. And that will always be my first. So, uh, in that year long time where we engaged with divorce lawyers, he met someone very quickly, fell in love Mm. and became, uh, she became pregnant. Oh, wow. Now I didn't know this for a while. So we're not divorced. We're fighting our way through this stupid conversation (laughs) of, you know, what's fair and whatever. (laughs) And, uh, we're not talking to each other, right? We went from like trying to comfort each other through this hard time to like, it's done. It's Mm -hmm. over. So, um, there was this day that he called me, uh, I think it was in May and my phone rang and it was him and, oh no, he sent me a text Mm. and he said, are you available to talk? And I knew right away, I was like, he's either calling to tell me that he's moved in with her, that they're engaged or that they're having a baby. Cause otherwise he's not, he's not texting me. Why is he calling? Why is he texting me to see if I'm free for a call? Those texts are the most difficult. So I knew, so, yeah, I knew there. right away to talk, to talk and I sat down and it was a beautiful day. The sky was blue. There were these, it was, there was like a sort of a bit of a wind and there were these white clouds passing by and I phoned him and he was like, well, I was hoping to get together with you because there's something I want to talk to you about. And I was like, we don't need to get together. Mm. Just tell me, yeah. just tell me. And I was looking up and he said, Jen and I are having a baby. Mm. Even now it was, it's hard. That was hard. Like yeah. I wanted to be a mom, you know, yeah. I wanted to have a baby and I'm glad we didn't. Yeah. And just so you know, the happy part to this is I'm actually really good friends with her and his kids. Mm. Wow. And they're yeah. not together anymore. Oh, <laughs> but they had more, they had multiple? They had two. They had a little girl and a little boy. So this was oh. May of 20, 2007, right? Because we separated in 2005. We were apart for a year battling it. And then we got into the next year and it was May of 2007. And he told me he was having a baby. And at some point in the summer, I went home to Nova Scotia and I was with my dad and my dad looked at me and he said, Jody, it's time to put this divorce to bed. Yeah. Stop. You can build your life without whatever he quote unquote owes you. Yeah. He didn't really actually owe me anything. We were only together for four years. Right. But we do get entitled and we do get... Well, we get bitter. bitter we get like, yeah. well, this is what the law says. Yeah. And, and it's like, who cares? What makes yeah. sense here? Right. Yeah. You know what made sense? Cut the tie. Yeah. Yeah. He's moved on. Move on. He's fallen in love with somebody. Yeah. He's having a baby. And it was funny because I was the initiator. And yet that time for me was when I really went into some deep grieving. I was mm-hmm. sad. Mm-hmm. I felt like I'd made a mistake. I tricked myself. Mm. Oh, I've let go of this kind mm. man. Now he's fallen in love with someone else. Now it's undoable. Now they're right. having a baby together. I was devastated. And I had to work my way through that summer, like accepting that a uh, emotion that I had put in play was now permanent. Yeah. It was not regret. reversible. Yeah. And I, it was the time when the book came out, A Million Little Pieces. Oh, Do you yeah. guys remember that Love book? that book, yeah. And there, the guy in it is a drug addict and he has this, um, uh, saying and it's hold on. Mm. And he, that's how he would talk himself through his cravings or whatever. And I latched onto that. And when I was in my deep moments of like crying or feeling lonely or feeling like a fucked up mess, and I swear on yeah, this podcast, absolutely. um, <laughs> I would just say to myself, hold on. Like if you just hold on through this really tough moment of feeling like everything is failing and the world is falling apart, you will get through it. And then there'll be another moment where you have to hold on again, just hold tight because you'll get through it. So it's, it's emotional to talk about, right? Yeah. Like I'm fully healed from it now, but when you go back on a journey and discuss that, like it was really sad. Yeah. And then what happened was I uh, wrapped up this visit with my father 
And I came back. Uh, no, I was with my dad and I called my lawyer and I said, I'm ready to get divorced. I'm done. Mm. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, I don't want to fight about this anymore. Yeah. I don't care. He's happy. I want him to be happy. This is finished. And she said, I'm going to need you to put this in writing for me <laughs> because she's got a right. responsibility, yes. right? So I sat down, I wrote the email. I was like, as per our conversation, I am letting you know that with full sound mind, I'm saying, mm. I don't want anything. Right. What I want is to walk away. I yeah, want to yeah. let him go in peace and I want to go in peace. And that's how I want to deal with it. Thanks to my amazing father, mm. who's honestly the best guy in the world. <laughs> so Divorce goes in motion, and then that comes that weird day, you've been through this, the day that comes with that person's signature on it, uh -huh. and you see their signature, and now you're adding your signature. And the last time you did that was probably either when you sold your house or signed a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. For me, there was no birth certificate for a child, but the last time we'd done anything like that was when we bought our house. Yeah. So then that all floods through you. And it's another moment that's quite painful because it's this... Um, sentimental, like mm -hmm. it's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, it's not, that's not the word I'm looking for, but anyway, like a ritual. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's this mm -hmm. significant, you know, symbol, it's like a mm -hmm. milestone yeah. in your life. Yeah. That's supposed to be a pot. Like usually when you sign things yes. like that together, it's a positive milestone. Yeah. We're signing a, you know, a, a wedding, marriage, a marriage license. license. We're signing a home purchase. We're signing a child's birth certificate. These are positive things that you're doing as a unit, but here you're signing to separate that unit. So yeah, those it's, two the, signatures, it's the togetherness. Well, well this the, is the time you're actually using those two signatures to never be together again. It's, right. Those two signatures will, right. They'll never, yeah. they'll never be together again. That was a poignant moment for me. Yeah. And, and knowing that this day was coming, I knew that the papers were coming. I had started to draft him a letter in an email to just say like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry yeah. that we ended up here and I want you to know I'll always care about you. And the way I saw it was that we failed each other. And I said, I'm sorry that I failed you. I'm sorry for my part in the disintegration of this relationship, but I just want you to be happy and I'm so happy for you. And you know, whatever else it said. And I, I honestly wish I'd kept it. I did that expecting nothing back. It was my way of putting closure for me for him to know that even though we had set out to spend the rest of our lives together and it didn't work out, that there was no reason why he shouldn't know that I still cared for him. I still respected him. I still appreciated him. And uh, I sent that and he sent me back a letter 10 times more beautiful wow. than what I wrote him. And then we became friends on Facebook and we didn't communicate. He... He went on to have, so we, se we separated in September of 2005. We divorced in September of 2007 and we married in September of 2001. So September was our five years to the day, two years to the, you know, not to yeah. the day, to the month. And then two years apart before we finalized things. And they had their baby in November. And my goal was, I don't want to be married to you mm. when you give birth right. because- one day your daughter is going to come into this world and she doesn't need to think that her father was married to his ex-wife at right. the time. And that for me was a big motivator in, right. in addition to the, you know, right. the advice and counsel I got from my dad. I was like, why do I want to be married to him when he's moved on? He's got a whole life that he's building. And, and now that little girl is someone who's in my life and wow. she's turned 16 Oh. And, you know, she, she sends me texts and says, I love you and I miss you and let's do something together. It's pretty special. Wow. Yeah. It's really, and he's I mean. very supportive of it. And it's just really, and his son is the sweetest. They are the nicest kids. The Jenny and Billy have just done phenomenal things with their children. Oh, that's so beautiful. So, um, yeah. So listen, it's a unique story. It's not common that everybody would have this relationship, but when his next marriage started to suffer, he reached out to me and I was able to support him, but not in a biased way where I was like, oh, your ex-wife is a, you know, a pain. I just understood. I just understood things go wrong between yeah. people. It doesn't mean that someone's a bad person or that someone did something wrong. Right. People fail each other. That's what divorce is. 
you go in, you look at each other and you say, I'm gonna be here for you. We're gonna get through this together. We're gonna make this life work. And then you fail each other and the ball drops and then there's all this anger and you did this and you did that and you were bad and you let me down. And it's like, no, we let each other down. And that's how a marriage fails. Like, I just think like generosity. Like when I think yeah. of your story, you were so generous in in writing that letter, in not fighting for what was, you know, quote unquote, yours or right or what you were entitled to. It's just, it's very of the unconscious, or what's the a conscious uncoupling of like, I'm going to choose this high road. I'm going to choose to treat you as a person, not as like my adversary. I'm going to choose kindness and love, even if it's not love for like in a romantic way, it is this love that we once shared and I want to honor that. And it's a respect for what you had or beautiful. what you want or what you tried to have. But I don't think, I think it's only, po I don't think it's possible in every situation. It's not. Of course not. Right? Of course and I not. think that it's like, as some people have all these intentions to, to go through yeah. their divorce like that and they can't. And it's understandable that they can't. Because they're dealing with some, some, Shoot, some on the other side who's just, they, they're just, so it's, it's really wonderful to hear that you were both sort of in that mindset. Yeah. You were both in that kind, generous mindset where you could really, um, you know, support each other and not, and not try and, you know, get vengeance against but one another. But even in this instance, even though you maybe weren't enemies while it was, while it was falling apart, you, you still could have been vengeful. Listen, yeah. listen, you guys are very generous. We had, listen, I was a terrible wife. Okay. Oh God, tell me I more. was, <laughs> I was a brat. I was immature. I was partying all the time. I was drinking like a maniac. You know, I was selfish. He was selfish. You know, I wanted to sleep in in the mornings and wake up together. And he liked NASCAR and whatever goes on at five in the morning. And I'd wake up alone on a Saturday and, you know, he's down watching TV. Like I was lonely in my mm. marriage. I think he was lonely, mm -hmm. but he's a, my, a man. So yeah. like, oh, my dinner's on the table. And, you know, my wife's like different mm. experience, right? Our marriage was not harmonious. We fought, we were, we were contentious and the year of stalemate between us was also, it wasn't a lot of interaction. We didn't have a lot of assets or we didn't have the kid part, which right. is a totally different kettle of fish, but it wasn't all roses. It's just in the end, the way that we were able to heal from it. And I think we healed differently. I think I had to make my peace. And then once he wrote that letter back, it's not like we were in touch. We weren't. And oddly, never once ran into each other ever in the city of Toronto. Wow. Was never bumped into each other, wow. never saw each other on the street. So weird. That we is. definitely run in a very similar social yeah. circle. So it wasn't all like, you know, rainbows and sunshine. It wasn't. But I think it's that... I was able to for sure initiate a friendly uh, gesture that I did of my own volition. Mm -hmm. He reciprocated. So I give him full credit for yeah. that. But it, it's not like we were like, hey, how are you? What's going yeah. on? Yeah, like right. it was it was done and we both moved on through. And then when his marriage, uh, his second marriage uh, wasn't going the way that it needed to, ultimately I was able to support him in a way through that. I think because A, I know him mm -hmm. and... Um, and I also just, I think, I think divorce is a positive thing. So I know that must be a very controversial uh, <laughs> statement. Uh, for people who are happily married, and like I said, I have a handful of friends uh, who are all happily married. That's not who divorce is for. Right. You know, divorce is for people who are discontent with one another, who feel like they're not in the right relationship, who are misaligned, who are bickering all the time, who uh, speak more with irritation about their partner than they do with love. You don't have to live like that. Yeah. Right. Don't subject yeah. yourself There's to misery. Way. There is yeah. another way. Actually give each other the gift of mm. divorce yeah. and move on. Because if you don't, you're basically lassoing someone into a stifling situation. You're both going to um, not be fulfilled uh, in your soul, in your level of happiness. You're not setting a great example for your children. Uh, and and you're, you're compromising on life. Yeah. Like we're here for one go around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, listen, after my divorce, I naively thought, oh my God, I'm going to fall in love. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. I'll just meet the right person. Right. Well, it doesn't work like yeah. that. 
I then uh, dated, you know, different people, bad relationships, relationships that didn't result in having children. Um, and uh, I still will say it was better that we divorced because otherwise I think if we'd had children, I think we still would have ended up divorced, mm -hmm. but now there would have been kids involved. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that uh, we would have just driven each other crazy for yeah. the rest of our lives. And yeah. why bother doing that? My life has not been easy. There's been moments where it's been really hard and at mm -hmm. times it's been lonely, but it's my life mm -hmm. that I'm in control of, mm -hmm. that I'm dictating and living the way I want without trying to like fit myself into a box that doesn't feel like the right place to yeah. be. And earlier yeah. you mentioned feeling lonely in your relationship. And I think that's, I just want to circle back to that because I think it's so important because you can be lonely with someone which is a very very and, different kind of loneliness but you can but, be not lonely alone yes. like I don't know what the opposite of lonely is like fulfilled and, exactly yes. where you're not coming home to this person and being like okay you're here but I wish you weren't here or I wish I wasn't here both things and All that's a things. terrible that's feeling a terrible and thing. you probably know that feeling yeah it's an awful feeling to feel that and i think everyone who goes through divorce almost everyone goes through that that point or any relationship breakup yeah where you're it, there's a period of time where you're in the relationship and you know it's not working and you know where mm -hmm. it's headed um but you're not quite out yet and that's and that's such a lonely difficult yeah. sticky time to be in and you talk as well about shame and it's funny because we we do make marriage so public. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like 200 of my you know, nearest and dearest yeah. make these vows and these promises and these commitments so publicly that when it goes awry, all of a sudden you're not even worried about your own feelings. You're no, worried about the opinions of yes. those 200 people. Yeah. And it's a serious problem. It's and a, a You were quite problem. young when you, as was I, you were quite young when you went through your divorce. You were what? 35. 35, okay. So 35 I was, to 37 were yeah, my two years. And yeah. so in, in, I was 31. That's and like, really young. I was really young. Yeah. And so I was very much the first one to, you know, mm -hmm. to get divorced. And like you, I have a lot of friends who have very solid relationships. And um, it was it was strange. It was strange to be in that position. Well, you feel uh, vulnerable. You feel exposed, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You feel like now everybody knows like my dirty, dark little secret yeah. that like we weren't happy and that we didn't have that magical thing that you guys mm. have that was going to make it work. Yeah. And we're losers and yeah. I'm a loser yeah. and I spent all this money on this wedding. And yeah, yeah like you go, you, you beat yourself up. Yeah. You there beat is, yourself up. There's a relationship hierarchy. Marriage is apparently what we're all like yeah. gunning for. Once you can tick that box, like good, now I've done my, you know, societal due diligence. Regardless of the quality of your marriage. Exactly. Which is the biggest problem. Which is so fucked up. It's like yeah. the, the being married matters more than the quality yes. of the marriage. So people will stay in, yeah. in unhealthy, lonely, unfulfilled marriages yeah. because they are afraid of the other side. Your relationship status yeah. is this, more important than your happiness. And that's wacky. And like you were saying about like regret and about, you know, going back. And I was thinking as you were talking that I, th I think if you ask just about anyone who's gone through divorce five years out, if they regret getting divorced, mm -hmm. the I answer think, is no, no, never. Yeah. The answer, answer is no, no. because they, f you find that fulfillment, you find that empowerment and that happiness on the other side. It's not right away. It's, it's a not painful overnight. journey. Yeah, yeah. It's a very painful journey, but it builds, it, it makes you stronger. Totally. And I, yeah, I would be hard pressed to find someone who says, actually, yeah, I do regret Nobody getting regrets divorced. getting divorced. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, listen, we're talking about the painful journey and, you know, it, there's a dark tunnel in different things in life. Divorce is one of them coping with a death, you know, some, for some people maybe getting terminated from a job, right? Low points, right? Where you're in this tunnel and it's so dark and it feels so impossible and you just can't see your way out. You don't know how you're going to get through to the other side. There's no light shining. There's nothing. You're just like morose and you know, downtrodden and overwhelmed and nothing is going to be good. And you go through that in divorce, right? Like you just feel like, how is anything ever going to be better? And then like slowly you make your way along and you start to see that light at the other end of the tunnel. And we don't really have a choice, do we? Right? Like you have to summon the strength to get mm -hmm. through it. And as you're summoning that strength and as you're trotting down this dark, murky path, you're growing and you're evolving and you're learning and you're getting perspective. And hopefully for all of us, I think it's really critical that you do a lot of introspection because there's no point in going through all of that if you're not willing to look inside and say, 
How can I be better? What was, mm. what was my accountability in this situation? I took accountability when Billy and I divorced. I was like, these are the ways in which I was a terrible partner. And I wish I could go back and change that. But if I could go back and change that, I would have been a more mature, completely different yeah, woman completely at the time, yeah. right? And it's so easy to say that yeah. all these years later. Yeah. Um, but when you are going through this journey and it's painful, you get through the other side and you know you see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you can embrace divorce in time, because you have to grieve it and you have to be sad and go through all this BS, it's like a portal into a new world. Yes. You're like, oh, this world. <laughs> oh, the world where I can do what I want yes. and I'm not bickering with someone about something stupid and we're not irritating each other all day. It's like a breath of fresh air, right? And it's scary. Yeah. Like it was scary for me. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, I'm not just going to say women because maybe men feel this way too. Like the, the security of being in a relationship and this, this stigma that society puts on it is a safer place to reside mm -hmm. than that scary place of branching out on your own. But do it because it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Even though for someone like me to this day, who's not remarried, and I'm actually kind of glad because if I do get married again one day, I just want it to be, that's it. Like, yeah. I don't want to yeah. be one of these people that did like marriage Second number two and marriage years. number yes. three. And listen, I'm not judging, okay? I'm not. I, I just don't, don't want to go through it. Yeah. I just don't want to go yeah. through yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I did it. I was married. <laughs> I got divorced. That's behind me. So should I ever get married again? I just want that to be the, the one, the next one and done. Um, but, you know, it is a portal. And if you can get through that portal, then you're just like, it's like an aha moment where you're like, oh, like it's a new world. The second chance, I say it's the second chance yeah. in a life that, you know, you maybe never knew you needed. Totally. And maybe yeah. we can flip the script and stop uh, uh, sort of telling folks that being in a relationship is the only way. And I think women maybe get this more, like girls are taught this lesson, right? We'll think of all of our fairy tales and oh, she ended up with Prince Charming and they lived happily ever after. It's like, it's so the wrong messaging. It's so wrong. You prioritized yourself, your happiness. That should really be the only messaging that's out there. If somebody comes along and they add to your already very happy life, great. great good for you, whatever. A lot of folks maybe have a career or maybe animals or maybe travel, like whatever it is that adds to your story, that pumps your tires, that makes you feel good. Because at the end of the day, we should all just be prioritizing ourselves, our yeah. own happiness. And whatever that looks like for you individually, that's great. There doesn't need to be this comparative, this like constant, oh, look at what they've got. Oh, I wish I had that. Or that seems better. And we're all going to do that right. maybe inevitably. And maybe this is like so blue sky, you know, vibes or whatever the saying is. I just wish that we could stop sending this message that being with somebody completes is more you important or, than being. Right. Yeah, and that if, that fulfills you. Like you fulfill you. And if you're not, and when you wake up that morning feeling fulfilled, go find what it is, but it doesn't have to be a person. You can get it from other places many other places more, well, more permanent yeah. fulfillment yeah. right and because your relationship proof. is not if you put all of your you know emotional well-being and sense of fulfillment on someone who might not be there forever that's a dangerous yeah. game to play you yeah. have to get it in more stable uh more stable sources like your work like your yeah. other passions like yourself like and when yourself. you and when you do that deep digging and you start to figure yourself out ultimately i think for me, this is my own take on relationships. I think compatibility is so essential. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing all that digging and you're like, okay, so now I'm doing, you know, my gardening or I, I do my once a week, you know, whatever class with my girlfriends or, you know, I'm journaling, like whatever the things are that you decide you're going to do to, to fill your cup. If you're still not compatible with your partner mm -hmm. and you're still not happy, like I just wish more people could be courageous and make that hard decision. Now, listen, I say this with the caveat of fully acknowledging that I didn't have children. That's a whole different ball of wax. When there's kids involved, it must the lines must get very blurry. It must be like, well, how do we part ways? We are a family unit, mm. first and foremost. So I do understand for people that that would be a really, really difficult challenge. So I'm not sitting on a soapbox and saying, divorce is easy and everyone mm -hmm. should get divorced. 
for me, it was more simplified because there were no children and we'd only been together married for four years. That's a lot different than 20 years in and you've got, you know, kids and it's, you know, extra complex. But I still think that even when you're deep in a marriage and you've got kids, if the compatibility isn't there, if the discontentment and the angst and the bickering and, you know, if there is lack of intimacy, et cetera, if all of those things are at play, you're selling yourself short Mm -hmm. because when you're saying like, we can have what we want in life, we just have to decide your second chance is a second chance you give yourself. For sure. But we all have to take ownership of that, right? Men and women included. Because I think men are creatures. And again, I don't mean to keep, I'm not man bashing here. But creatures of of like settling in, right? Like it's easier to just be in this than to like uh, disrupt everything. And I would say women are probably more the disruptors, but, but even as a female, if you're the mother of kids and you're feeling, you know, anxious about it, it's like maybe a podcast like this is an inspiring moment or maybe that marriage counselor or a a mediator such as yourself, Alex, who helps you get to that place of your world is not going to end because you get divorced. (laughs) Yes. Right, because that's what people think. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're and speaking of the of the kids issue, and Alex, you were talking about prioritizing your happiness. Mm-hmm. Staying in a marriage does not mean prioritizing your kids' happiness Definitely. over your own. Right? Getting you know having the realization of you know what I'm not happy, I'm not fulfilled. All of those things ends up helping your kids, not hurting them, because immensely helping because them. Seeing the seeing their parents in that bickering, in that you know daily grind of just not getting along kids can see it and you're not doing them any favors by staying additionally the the longer you drag out your divorce same thing you're just living in conflict and the kids feel that energy it's very unpleasant and that's all they're going to remember they're not going to remember the dates and the times and how many years was in between whatever they're just going to remember this icky feeling that lasted too long that lasted way too long and also the message that you're sending them is that you should, despite your own happiness, you should stay oh, yeah. in something. You should accept this, whether it's mistreatment or misalignment. You, yeah, exactly. Versus showing them someone who can, you know, pick themselves up, you know, have, get through their hard days, exactly. hold on and build something for themselves and stand on their own two feet. And I think that's an amazing yeah. role model. Yeah. Role that's modeling to show your better. kids. I mean, yeah. I, I, I hope I do that with my own. And of course it's not easy, but I think, st- but staying in, a, in an unhealthy marriage isn't easy either. No, it's yeah. definitely so, an think, unhappy situation. You then take yes. your unhappy dynamic between you and your partner and you now share your unhappy dynamic with innocent yeah. people right. who yeah. it's not their problem yeah. that you don't get along. That's your problem. Totally. So figure it out and if you figure out that you can't live together anymore happily then live apart happily mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. yes it's a painful journey to get yeah. there but that journey isn't forever mm-hmm. right that's a sh- if you look at a long life yeah it's worth it to go through that short little period of pain yeah. to then recalibrate mm-hmm, re-establish mm-hmm. Go for the second chance. Yeah. And sometimes the second chance doesn't end in another fairy tale happy situation, right. falling in love. It doesn't necessarily. I think most people can be guaranteed to find new love again. I did. Mm-hmm. I fell in love. Uh, I didn't stay with that person, but um, he's also still a great friend of mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but, you know, I'm a believer that there's, uh, it, it's really how it's, it's what you open yourself up to. Yeah. That's and it just you can't dictate the time. The universe yeah. doesn't work that mm-hmm. way, but it's it's what you open yourself up to. And if you're stuck in a crappy, uh, unhealthy, toxic dynamic and you're unhappy and you're angry, what what are you opening yourself up to? Yeah. Misery, yeah. and that's yeah. it, right? Yeah. So you have to exit that yeah. and open up the possibilities. Yeah. And that's why divorce is something I would advocate for people. Yeah. If you're unhappy and miserable, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to be cavalier, there's a lot to weigh out in consideration, but at the end of the day, this is not a death sentence. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean the end. It means the end of one way of living and starting a new way of living, which is probably going to be a happier, more fulfilling way of living. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Wow.
You want my job? <laughs> <laughs> Are you considering oh, yeah. a late life Alex, career change? <laughs> Alex, Alex, who marries people and helps them know, come apart. You it's are a, a full, unique character. She provides a full package. That's right. Oh, what does that say about me? I need maybe my own psychoanalysis. I, you know, I think it says you're a pretty special individual. Yeah. I just think happiness comes in so many forms. And whatever that is, let's get yeah. you there. Yeah. Whatever that looks like. Whatever the journey. Support people's journey to yeah. happiness. Yeah. Without judgment. With no judgment. And a lot of it is growth. And I read this beautiful quote last night and I wanted to like, it was on Instagram and I wanted to, um, you know, screenshot it and I was going to read it today because it was such a beautiful quote. And then one of my cats did something and my phone fell. And then when I touched the screen, you know, it it scrolled away. And then I was like scrolling and I was like, okay, this is going to take me three hours. I'm not going (laughs) to find it. But it was something about the seed, you know, a seed uh, in order for it to become like its full self, like a flower or a tree or whatever it's going to grow into a piece of fruit. It has to break apart. It has to come undone. It has to rebuild itself. And it's that journey that allows it to bloom into its best version of itself. Mm. And that requires like, you know, the seed cracks. Like that's what happens to us as people. We have to crack apart and like bloom into something else. But, But if we don't crack apart and learn from what goes on in that time, if you don't understand that you had a part in it, or if you're not willing to take accountability, if you're not willing to sort of figure out how did this happen and you can't just blame it all on the other person, you can't, then you get the opportunity to bloom, but you won't fully bloom if you just hold someone else accountable for it. Cause that's not the way it is. We have to, we have to take ownership of our part in these types of things in order to grow, find peace, move on, be happy. It's possible. Divorce is not a bad thing. It's just a painful journey. Yeah. It's going to be our new motto. Divorce is not a bad divorce thing. It's just a painful is, journey. Give the gift of divorce. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This <laughs> Christmas. This Christmas. <laughs> give the gift of divorce. The lawyers are all like, yeah. 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 I'm already thinking about a real, like, <laughs> with the music in the background. <laughs> oh, man. Jody, you're the uh, best. Thank, thank you, you so much. Listen, for, you're so inspirational. You. And you just, you went through a journey, but you really can, you know, come out of it yeah. so much. You've, you've bloomed. Thank you. I've really I've bloomed. bloomed and you know, I, it's many years later for yeah. me. Yeah. So it's easy to speak about, uh, so many years later, but I think this is the last lesson I'll leave when you're in a divorce and you're in it and you're deep in it and you're, you know, and it's happening. Think about 20, mm-hmm. 25, 30 years down the road. Cause when you get this many years down the road and what did we say? I am 16 years yeah. down the road. You don't want to remember yeah. that you behaved that way. True. Yeah. You don't, you want to look back and say, I maintained a yeah. semblance of dignity. Yeah. I maintained a, sen- a semblance of grace. Yeah. You know, that I was not a complete and utter mm-hmm. basket case because 20 years down the road, yeah. it's not going to matter. Yeah. What's yeah. going to matter is, are you friends with your ex? I know that might seem impossible sometimes. And maybe mm-hmm. friends isn't for everybody, but- What's cordial. the word? Like, are you able cordial. to be cordial? Yeah. With you your know, can you yeah. be around each other? Children are going to get married. They're going to have graduations. Mm-hmm. You have to be together. You have yeah. to make decisions together. You have to communicate together. Again, for the sake of the kids, people will go to each other's exes, families, funerals. Mm-hmm. Like, remember that. Give yourself some perspective. And yeah. this perspective that I'm sharing is so many years later, it's easy to speak about it in all of this way. And I don't have the kid factor. But I would say for people who have kids and it's super painful and they're really caught up in all the angst. Think about what that looks like in 16, 20, 30 years from now and navigate yourself accordingly. Yeah. 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 That's a really good reminder. How do you want to remember yourself? Yeah. And if you can't see it, look to people like you, Jody, who actually have been through it and can actually speak to it because it is hard to sort of have that, that foresight with, you know, when you're in it. Yeah. So trust people who've been through it, trust their advice, trust their guidance. And hopefully don't listen to the people who are like, yeah, he's such yeah. an asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and surround because, yourself with good people because, too. Yeah. yeah, because you don't want to get caught up in that. And it's easy to get caught up in that because because there are legitimate feelings of uh, disappointment and betrayal and, um, you know, grief. resentment. You can still see the grief For in sure. you now. Yeah. And, and, there, and I didn't expect to get emotional talking about that today. Yeah. It's funny just when you hearken back to a time that was a sad time, a time yeah. where you gave up something you wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, I gave up a marriage that I wanted. I gave up having kids. It was something I wanted. Uh, and uh, it, it is it is hard to talk about. But I think, you know, 
I, I would counsel anybody to just find their peace and whatever that means. Uh, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means that, and you're also giving the gift of peace to someone else. Totally. Right? So yeah. the gift you might of not peace see it. Is holiday season. <laughs> the gift, the That's a better messaging. For the gift of peace is holiday <laughs> by, season. Uh, by you're the the it, divorce it, it, papers. Peace right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we really appreciate you sharing your story. And it was not easy and it's yeah. always hard to be vulnerable and honest and especially when you know other people are listening. It's not just journaling or, you know, I meditating know, on your own I know, time. I'm really bearing it all, but I think it's so much time has passed that I feel comfortable sharing this. And I, I would tell any of my close friends this very openly uh, for people who don't know me or who, for people who are an acquaintance of mine, if they're hearing this, you know, it's just the truth. And, yeah. and that's, that's, that's the truth of my story. Um, I hope it offers anybody uh, a little sliver of inspiration to not feel shame, to find their peace and to trust in their instinct if something doesn't feel right. If you're not compatible and you're living a life of misery, try and find your way out of it and put your kids first. Thank you. Thanks, Jody. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I love Jody. I love Jody. Oh, I was I was tearing up. Like she was just yeah. so inspirational. And it's, I think, a really good perspective to realize that even when many years later you yeah. have come out on the other side, you've lived a happy, you know, fulsome life, you can still get choked up. Yeah. Like these emotions are still with us. We still do grieve the the death of of our like imagined life. Like not even the death. I often wonder too. It's like, are you actually sad that you've divorced this person, or are you sad that like the 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 imagined future you had? has come to an end. Yeah, I don't know. And and what you don't know is about to come. And like, that's really scary, right? I think it's scary to go into the unknown because people like predictability yeah, and yeah. they like okay, What is this quote I just read? People self-sabotage because it gives them some semblance of control mm -hmm. over the outcome. Right. Like They're we would rather- yeah. Rather stay in a shit marriage. Yep. Then be in the unknown for a yeah. little bit. Yeah, the right? scary unknown. The scary unknown. People, and I, I get and it. And that's true with not just marriage. No, with so many things. People are so afraid to move on yeah. from things from the job. They're afraid to move their house or to a new country. They're afraid or, to give up alcohol or they're afraid yeah. to, you know, change, you know. Yeah. Just make a step towards change. Even if that change is really Even desperately so needed or it's, and is better. And someone is telling you, no, 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 it's it's gonna yeah. be great. You're gonna you're, you're gonna find so your happiness. You're so ruled by fear. It's fear based. And I understand fear, it. I make a lot of decisions limbo. based on fear. Yeah. Like, I won't even pick up the phone and make a phone call, <laughs> even though like I gotta make my dentist appointment for my oral hygiene. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still too afraid. To, I mean, you might have to, but listen. still too afraid to do it. So, like I understand like that that vast unknown, but I loved. That Jody was like, just go with peace. Like at the end of the day, if you if you're struggling to make a decision, you don't know, you know, left versus right. What does like your inner peace want? Right. What will bring you more peace? Yeah. Follow because that. You don't need to live in that. Culture. This episode was written and created by Alex Howard and Amanda Silver. Produced, edited, and engineered by RTF Productions. Make sure to rate and review our show if you loved it, and give us a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you stream your podcasts stay up to date on all upcoming episodes. Thanks for listening and go easy on us. We're not your ex.